Excellency Ambassador Mohammed Saeed Amin Khan, and of course, thank you to the International Human Rights Commission for hosting this World Summit. Uh, my, my greetings to all uh, the distinguished panelists. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, I think this World Summit uh, this year gathers around a message of solidarity and hope. And uh, this title of together we have the power to build a more prosperous world for humanity. And uh, as a strong advocate for multilateralism, I could not agree more, Ambassador, with that statement. Uh, for it is now perhaps more than ever that we need uh, to uh, revamp uh, collective action on the basis of global solidarity, to recover from the uh, multidimensional crises that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has unleashed. Um, as we have heard from other speakers, we are living a time of multidimensional uh, crises. Uh, today's societies, countries, regions, and increasingly are increasingly uh, interdependent and interconnected. And this has brought extraordinary flux of information, of technology, of goods, and unprecedented uh, material wealth. But at the same time, the paradox is that uh, we are living uh, this uh, multidimensional crisis uh, consisting in armed conflicts, violations of human rights, uh, rights, forced displacement, disasters, poverty and inequality, epidemics and economic downturns. And, and this, this uh, um, structural, uh, structural challenges uh, go beyond borders, and we know that. And that puts, uh, you know, and this is really putting the prospects of peace, of stability, of uh, uh, upholding human rights uh, into questions. And uh, I think that the current health, humanitarian, and socioeconomic crisis uh, caused by the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and we know the numbers uh, are uh, terrifying. 110 million people um, affect, infected worldwide and a death toll of 2.46 million people together with a global economic contraction of uh, uh, minus 3.5% of total GDP loss in 2020 only. And this of course is going to decrease, uh, decrease uh, you know, ac access to jobs, 114 million people lost, lost their jobs only last year. And I think this is the uh, clearest example of uh, the scope and magnitude of the global risks that we are facing as we speak. I will, uh, would like to focus my remarks on a crucial aspect of the post-COVID recovery efforts and the building back better uh, our world. And this is the need to advance in the provision of global public goods, such as universal health coverage. The COVID uh, pandemic, I think, has made it crystal clear uh, that markets cannot replace the role of the state in guaranteeing universal uh, basic uh, access to public services. And I think this has been uh, you know, the, one of the big uh, and important teachings of what we are living uh, today. Uh, one of the key lessons from the pandemic is the need of uh, robust, well-funded public health systems and universal health coverage. In this context, uh, the notion of the public, of the commons, has taken a new meaning and centrality in policy choices and investment. Uh, even in the most liberal democracy, the COVID-19 crisis has also shown the need of a greater solidarity and greater social discipline towards protocols, rest restriction, and community responses. So here we have uh, much to learn, for example, from indigenous peoples in African and Asian countries <laughs> where communal values are stronger than in Western societies. In Africa, for example, and there are many representatives here, at the outbreak of the COVID-19, the African Union uh, deployed a joint <coughs> response based on solidarity. Uh, they created a common fund to raise resources to support a pool procurement of diagnostics and other medical commodities to mitigate the impacts of the crisis. Uh, another example, the 15 East Asian and Pacific member countries 
of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership have managed to control the pandemic using measures that, such as uh, lockdowns, mobility restrictions, physical distancing, testing and quarantine, but uh, in cooperation, in exchanging good practices, in strengthening uh, cooperation, concerted action. And unfortunately, despite these examples, the international cooperation and communal discipline, we have also unfortunately witnessed a more general tendency towards the adoption of unilateral and nationalistic responses to, call, to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. And, and here we have what I call uh, the, the vaccine disasters, because uh, as a uh, former president of, of Ecuador was mentioning, you know, 75% uh, of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered in only 10 countries, while other 130 countries have not yet received a single dose. So here we have uh, a strong show of, of inequality, of uh, um, uh, the need uh, for oh, greater yeah. uh, sharing and, and cooperation uh, as well. So uh, just, just to close, I think that uh, we have learned uh, in the past months, the importance of universal health coverage as a fundamental for achieving the sustainable development goals. And we have also learned that we need, uh, you know, to consider that public is back public services such as health and education should be at the forefront of the measures against uh, the crisis. And finally, I think that we have also learned that we need to build back better tooling of the United Nations. The process of reform of the UN organs that the UN Secretary General is leading as we speak should count with the support of all international stakeholders in order to provide the world with a revamped multilateral architecture that delivers global commons, leaving no one, no one behind. I think that the COVID-19 related crises are in essence a human rights crisis as we, as we have heard this morning. And these multiple crises affect our democracies and the delivery of the sustainable development goals. We know what to do uh, to contain the pandemic. We even know how to do it. The question is who is going to do it? And we are part of the who. Any response or alternative has to come from the whole of society, from us, from women. And of course, each one of us has a different role to play, but leadership is critical at this juncture, especially at the global level. And I would uh, I close by uh, thanking uh, again the conveners of, of this summit. Thank you and back to you, Mr. Moderator.